investors have been taking the trade war in stride so far, but will U.S. disputes with China and Europe affect corporate earnings when the numbers start to roll in later this week? Melissa Armo of StockSwoosh.com and Michael Lee, Principal of Investmark Advisory Group, joining us now. Good morning, guys. Great to have you here. So on Friday, guys, we had those $34 billion of tariffs going into effect. More could be coming in a couple of weeks. How long, Melissa, can the markets continue to ignore this? I don't really think the markets have ignored it. They ignored it Friday when they came out with the new tariffs, Friday on July 6. But really, I think it was just that jobs number. It made the market lift up. But all in all, the market was really neutral last week. So I don't take away too much of the rally from Friday. I think the markets have reacted to tariffs. I think that's part of the reason we've been stuck in this range since February, since the market sold off. We really can't seem to break higher and get any traction in the Dow or the S&P. And yet we're not really falling off a cliff. I think July is a very important month. Yes, like you said, it's earnings season and the banks report Friday, and that's critical for this market. Right. Well, I was just going to get to that. So let's take a look at what those earnings expectations are. The banks for the second quarter, quarter expected to post earnings up 22.7%. Uh, that's against S&P 500 uh, earnings bump of 19.5%. Who doesn't like this? Uh, Michael, to you, what are you expecting? And just a reminder to people out there, when J.P. Morgan Chase blew through the numbers for the first quarter, they had an incredible quarter. Their stock went down. So what are you expecting? So I'm expecting more of the same numbers-wise. What's holding back these banks is the shape of the yield curve. So the difference between short-term interest rates and longer-term interest rates. And that's that's at a very uh, small margin right now because typically banks lend short or borrow short and lend long. I expect the shape of the yield curve to increase, or the, sorry, the slope of the yield curve to increase over time. But what we're interested from these banks is their forward guidance. How, uh, how do they expect loan growth? What are they seeing out there from the consumer and kind of their guidance going forward? But Otherwise, I would expect blowout earnings, big buybacks, big dividend increases. So we'll see how the market reacts to it. Well, I like to hear that. That's for sure. Melissa, to you, let's talk about that Friday jobs report. You brought that up earlier. Gave a big lift to the markets, obviously. But sort of the elephant in the room was wages, which were sort of nascent, right? I mean, it, it wasn't a, a big month for wage growth. Uh, what do you see going forward? Are we going to see any reference to wages in some of these earnings reports? Uh, what do you see in your crystal ball? Well, <laughs> I wish I had a crystal ball. <laughs> but as far as the wages go, I think the fact that they're lagging is just part of the course thing where you're going to see this take effect over time. Trump's policies are working. I don't think anyone can deny that. With those kind of jobs numbers on Friday, his policies are working. Wage growth is one of those things they're working on in the future. I think companies in this, not just this earning season, but looking out the next six months, the next 12 months into 2019, they're going to start to have to compete more for better employees. If people are going out there and quitting their jobs, which there was a there was a report that came out last week, people are actually quitting their jobs to find other jobs, which is, which is very unusual but they're doing it to better themselves. And part of this is the optimism, the consumer confidence, and all of this is due to the results of Trump's policies, and they are really working. And I think the market has been lagging, but I think looking ahead, the market's going to turn around at some point, and then you will see companies compete for employees, and then right. they're going to have well, to pay hey, more. Look, they're already competing for employees. This is a highly competitive market already. Michael, quickly, we don't have a lot of time left, but I do want to ask you about the dog days of summer here. August upon us, are you expecting more volatility because because volume should be lower. And what should individual investors do as, as we head into the late summer? Well, I, I think you're totally right about volatility, especially with the increasing rhetoric of these trade wars, that uh, if we do see some volatility, if you have cash that's online, figure out names you like and figure out price points you'd like to enter at. All right. Great advice from you guys, Melissa and Michael. Thank you so much for coming on today. Appreciate your advice and your time. Thank you. Have a good week. <laughs> you too. All right, well, coming up in sports news and baseball, the all-star lineups have been announced. Jared Max has the team rosters for us. And then in tennis, it is Manic Monday at Wimbledon. The matchups where, you know, everybody plays and then some. All right, take a look at futures right now. We've got the Dow up 107 in the pre-market, S&P up 10, NASDAQ up 28 and three quarters. We'll see if we can continue the Friday numbers. You're watching FBN AM.